Season 3 of My Hero Academia, or Boku no Hero Academia, just premiered this past weekend on Crunchyroll, so it's the perfect time to recap the major events and character developments from Season 2. What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein, and let's get caught up on My Hero Academia. But first, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to GameSpot Universe for more on anime, TV show breakdowns such as Rick and Morty or Legion, and your go-to destination for all things MCU. Season 2 of My Hero starts off after Class 1A has been attacked by and survived the League of Villains. All Might has weakened even further, only being able to sustain muscle form for one and a half hours, and Aiza was left in bandages after his battle with the League. While the attack was definitely devastating, it serves as real battle training for Class 1A and makes them somewhat famous. But with things cleared up for the time being, UA holds its annual sports festival where we finally get a chance to meet other first years and see more of the school, including Class 1B, many of whom are jealous of Class 1A and their newfound popularity. There's also the General Studies course for students who couldn't make it into the Hero course, but could eventually work their way up into it, the Support course, where students go to learn how to make support items for heroes, and the Business course, for students who want to learn and work in all the management and logistical aspects of the business of hero agencies. We see all kinds of new heroes and powers, including this one. So is their quirk just being a clown? Because that is probably the worst quirk of all. The sports festival itself is a major event for the school and its students, as heroes use it to scout for potential interns to their hero agency, business students scout what heroes may have popularity and can be used to gain money, and potential clients watch support students to see if there are any support tools they'll want to invest in. The festival consists of three major elimination events, the first being an obstacle race, the second a cavalry battle, and finally a one-on-one -on -one tournament. Todoroki and Midoriya square off during the tournament, where we learn about Todoroki's troubled past with his father. Todoroki has both the power of ice and and fire due to his father Endeavor, who has fire powers, marrying his wife who has ice powers solely for the sake of having a more powerful son. Due to an abusive relationship with his father, Todoroki refuses to use his fire powers even if it means losing a battle. While Midoriya can win this battle, he instead uses it as a chance to reignite Todoroki's passion and pull him out of the darkness clouding him. Midoriya. Arigato. After a heated final match, no, no pun intended, between Bakugo and Todoroki, Bakugo pulls out the win, but is beyond pissed and goes straight Bakugo because Todoroki didn't go all out on him and he didn't feel his win was deserved. It's also during the tournament we find out Ida's brother, Ingenium, has been crippled by Hero Killer Stain, which plays a key part in starting off the internship in Hero Killer Arc. Bakugo gains an internship with the number four hero, Best Genus, who is more interested in teaching him manners. And who is still one of the most baffling heroes to me. On the more useless internships, we see the chivalrous hero fourth kind take both Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu under his wing, where the focus is on community service. Mirada takes an internship with Mount Lady, for obvious reasons, but ends up cleaning her messy apartment the whole time. And Yao Yorozu and Kendo take an internship with Uobami because she thinks they look cute and would do well in her commercial. And easily the most pointless internship in the show. And on the legitimately good internships front, Jiro takes an internship with Death Arms, who seems to do legitimate hostage and rescue training. Similarly, while Asui's internship seems boring at first, she ends up on a rescue mission gaining valuable experience. Uraraka trains with Gunhead, which ends up being one of the most fruitful internships as she learns genuine hand-to-hand -hand combat. Todoroki decides to take an internship with his father, Endeavor, to continue moving on beyond his fractured past. Meanwhile, Midoriya gains an internship with All Might's mentor, Gran Torino, where he finally learns how to start controlling his power without injuring himself. With this, he learns an incredibly cool, and useful, way to harness power into his body to quickly shoot off of surfaces in a way similar to Gran Torino, though his style is closer to what he's seen Bakugo pull off. Finally, we have Ida, who specifically took an internship in the same district hero killer Stain is said to be in, so he can try to avenge his brother and take revenge on Stain. This leads directly into the crux of the arc. Stain has refused to join the League of Villains. His goal is to restore the purity of being a hero, and he sees much of the selfishness plaguing heroism reflected in the League's motivations. Not buying into their philosophy, he goes rogue, continuing his mission to wipe out heroes he deems unworthy. At the same time, the League of Villains leader, Shigaraki Tomura, decides to unleash Nobus against the population, wanting to build notoriety for his group. 
These rampaging beasts keep all of the pro heroes busy, preventing them from helping or realizing Stain has crossed paths with UA students. Edith has steered away from his internship in order to find Stain and engaged him in battle, nearly losing and also almost getting another pro hero killed. Fortunately, Midoriya realizes Ida's goal when he learns about Stain's location and heads off to find him. Putting his newly honed abilities to use, Midoriya is able to hold his ground. But Stain's strange quirk, which involves ingesting the blood of his opponent to paralyze them, allows him to gain the upper hand. Thankfully, Midoriya has thought ahead and sent his location to Todoroki, who joins the fight. After helping Ida overcome some angst, the trio defeat and capture Stain. <laughs> Although Stain is defeated, a mishap allows him to briefly escape and kill a Nomu that kidnaps Midoriya. Before he's recaptured, he spouts his ideology. A world in which heroes are no longer fake. A world where every hero is like All Might. His conviction is overwhelming, and even the pro heroes recoil at just how oppressive his resolve is. Unfortunately, this moment is captured on video and quickly spreads via the news and social media, inciting villains and increasing interest in following Stain's ideology. And it just so happens that the League of Villains, who the news wrongly accredits with his actions, are welcoming to them. We also learn that while Midoriya has the quirk One for All, which All Might passed on to him, there's another ancient quirk that is its direct counter, and it's one which the true leader of the villains and the real herald of evil has, All for One. While All Might and Midoriya's One for All is the combined power of all that have wielded it before then, All for One is the selfish opposite, having the ability to steal others' quirks for a single person. The villain wielding it was around at the start of people manifesting quirks and created an evil society surrounding him. It was, however, his younger brother who had the ability to pass on quirks that tried to stop him. In failing, he passed on his powers, along with one for all, to heroes over time, hoping that one day a hero could finally stop this villain. Finally, All Might battled this very villain, who he thought had been defeated. However, this villain survived, and is the brains behind the League of Evil. Not only that, but All Might is dying. This season ends with the final exams, consisting of both a written exam and a practical exam in which two students must face off against the teacher. We end the season as Midoriya and Bakugo finally manage to work together in the final exam to emerge victorious over All Might, and with the tease of the League of Villains growing. And that wraps up a quick recap of Season 2. I'm super excited to see Season 3 animated, as after watching the first two seasons, I couldn't hold back and had to read the manga. What are you looking forward to seeing the most in Season 3? And for those of you who have only seen the anime, what do you hope to see in the upcoming Season 3? Also, let us know if you'd like to see more My Hero content on GameSpot Universe. Thanks so much for watching, and hit me up on Twitter with your My Hero thoughts. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.